All right, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get through the rest of the butterfly lemma in this video, but I'm gonna give it a try. So we know H and K are subgroups of G and H prime is normal in H and K prime is normal in K. And what we proved is we've proven that this subgroup is normal in here. And then in the last video, we proved that this subgroup is normal in here. Then similarly, this subgroup is normal in here. The last thing that we need to prove is that um, they, this quotient here is isomorphic to this quotient here. And we'll, how we're going to do that is we're going to prove this quotient is isomorphic to this quotient. And then by symmetric argument, we have this quotient is isomorphic to this quotient. And then transitivity, this quotient is isomorphic to this quotient. And so let's see here. Um, here since h prime h intersect k is normal in h prime that should be a k prime so h prime h intersect k prime is normal in h prime h intersect k we have now we're going to do a computation we've got um, h prime times h intersect k quotiented by h prime h intersect k prime. Um, and when I say division, this isn't like an actual fraction the way that you would do in elementary school or really any math. But this is a group quotient. So we're taking this subgroup and quotienting by this subgroup. And we can do that now that we know that this is actually a normal subgroup of this. And so anyways, we have this quotient, and then what this is equal to is this is equal to h prime, h intersect k prime, times h intersect k, this all divided by h prime, h intersect k prime. Okay, and so, What's going on here is like we see the denominators are the same. So what we need to prove is that the numerators are the same. But let's see here. So here we've got an eight, we've got H primes here. Um, but we've got H intersect K here. And we've also got H intersect K prime. Now H intersect K prime is a subgroup of H intersect K. And so if you have like, if you have a group G and a subgroup H, then H times G is going to equal G. And similarly, G times H is going to equal G. Um, that's because like the one inclusion is trivial and then the other one is slightly less trivial, but also trivial. So anyways, um, because this is a subgroup of here, we can just add it as, include it in here as a factor. Um, but now look. What we have is we have um, this is a normal subgroup of so h prime times h intersect k prime is a normal subgroup of h prime times h intersect k and h intersect k is just some other subgroup of h prime times h intersect k, right? Because that would just correspond to, certainly this is gonna be a subgroup of this because um, e is in here. So anyways, so you've got this thing of the form normal subgroup times other subgroup over normal subgroup. And that should make you think of the second isomorphism theorem. And indeed, when we apply that here, what we get is no, that's, that's, it's not approximately, it's a um, isomorphism. So this is isomorphic to, we've got, what we end up is we end up with that other uh, subgroup on the top and what's playing the role of that other subgroup? Um, we're just having H intersect K. It, there's no normality statements about that, at least not in this statement. And then what, what or in this, in how we're using it here. 
But then what do you put on the bottom? You put um, the intersection of the normal subgroup and the other subgroup. So the normal subgroup was h prime times h intersect k prime. And then you intersect that with h intersect k. Um, but this is equal to, let's see here, we'll put, we'll start with the denominator, h prime intersect k, k prime intersect h over h intersect k. Um, once we prove that the denominators are equal. Right? So what we're saying here is I'm claiming that this is equal to this um, in terms of the denominators. And once you have that, well, then obviously this fraction is equal to this fraction. Um, but look, that says that this is isomorphic to this. And going back to the picture, that says exactly that this quotient is isomorphic to this quotient. And then if we can do this argument, then if you replace every h with a k and every k with an h, then you get that this quotient is isomorphic to this quotient. And at that point, we're done. Because that's what we wanted to prove, was that those two on the, the wings were isomorphic. Um, so the last thing we have to prove is that these two groups are equal, and that's just, uh, it's easier than it looks. You don't have to do any fancy tricks. So, let's see here. So first, let's say GH is in um, H prime intersect K times K prime intersect H. Um, let's see here. So then GH is in, well, we know that H prime intersect K is obviously a subgroup of H prime, and this is a subgroup of H. And this is um, going to be a subgroup of H times H, which is equal to H. Okay, okay, so G times H is an H. Um, G times H is in, okay, so, well, here we have K, and here we have K prime, and so it's going to, this is a subgroup of K times K prime, which is a subgroup of K times K, which is equal to K, and GH is, can, is an element of, Okay, well obviously this is a subgroup of H prime. And then this, we can just leave that there. Hence, um, so what this proves is that this, this, this holds for any GH in here. And so this is a subgroup so any element in this product is going to be contained in here, here, and here. And so in particular, it's going to be contained in their intersection. And if you take their intersection, we have h prime times h intersect k prime. Then we intersect that with, well, the intersection of h and k. And so that's exactly one of the uh, inclusions that we wanted. And so that's half the battle. Um, well, I guess it's not half the battle, because one way is typically harder than the other. Um, now let's do the slightly trickier way. Or the slightly trickier direction, I should say. So, suppose G is an element of H prime, H intersect K prime, intersected with the intersection of H intersect K intersected with the intersection of h and k. Okay, so then g is equal to h k um, uh, 
So G is in here and here. So G, in particular, G is in H prime times H intersect K prime. So we can write it as the product of an element of H prime and the product of an element of H intersect K prime. So G equals H K um, for some H in H prime and K in H intersect K prime. Okay. Also, so if we can write G is this way, then that means that H times K also must be in this uh, collection, in this sub subgroup. And so H times K has to be in H intersect K. So HK is in H intersect K, which implies, okay, so H times K is in H intersect K. So in particular, HK is in K. So HK equals K prime for some K prime in capital K. I'm going to try to I, I hope that my lowercase k's and my uppercase k's are different enough that you can tell. Um, if not, then sorry. Um, but hopefully it should be clear by context. Okay, so that is true. So then um, h is equal to, well, if we multiply on the right by k inverse, then we get k prime times k inverse. And so this is in... K, okay, well, K prime is in K. K prime is in K. And where is K inverse? Well, K was in, um, K is in H intersect K prime. And so um, K, H intersect K prime is a subgroup. And so if K is in here, then K inverse is also going to be in here. So here we can put, um, instead of doing just like k times whatever, we can do k times h intersect k prime. So h intersect k prime. Um, okay, and this is obviously a subgroup of k. Just because there's the k there. Oh, is that? Yes, okay. Well, in fact... This is equal because remember, what we're doing here is we're taking k and we're. I guess I do need to. Um, yeah, set wise, this is equal to k, um, which means that's a subgroup. Um, and that's because what we're doing is here, k prime. So, a, okay, the inclusion is pretty straightforward. It's h intersect k prime is contained in k prime, which is contained in k. And therefore, this is contained in k times k, which is equal to k. Um, but similarly, you can get, let's see, if you have anything in here, then you can write it as an element of here by just doing that times the identity. And so there you go. Um, so that is equality. Okay? So... Okay, so where is h? h is in h prime, but now we know that h is in k. So thus, um, g equals h k, which is in, where is h? h we have proven is in the intersection of h prime and k, and then lowercase k was chosen to be in h intersect k prime. Oh, hey, that's what we were looking for. So thus, um, I'm not going to write it out. Um, hence the desired 
equality holds. Right? Because we've proven that this is contained in this, and then we know that any g in here is going to be contained in here, and so this is a subset of this, and therefore we have equality. And therefore this is equal to this. And so then this is isomorphic to this. And so then this, this quotient, this, quo, this divided by this is isomorphic to this divided by this. You flip all the h's and the k's and what you get is the other wing saying this quotient by this is isomorphic to this quotient by this. So then you have this quotient, isomorphic to this quotient, isomorphic to this quotient, and then those two are isomorphic. And there we go. That completes the Zossenhaus butterfly lemma. And with that, you can complete the Schreier refinement theorem because as we saw, there was just a few like uh, normality inclusions that we needed um, in order to wrap it up. What we needed was we needed uh, we needed normality inclusions of this type because these these were what the subgroups of our common um, of, of, of those refinements looked like. Those refinements looked, the subgroups that made up those refinements looked like these. And we need to prove that those were not just contained in each other, but that they were normal. So the butterfly lemma takes care of that. Um, but then you, we had two different refinements that we were looking at. And one would look like this, and the other would look like this. And in order to prove that those refinements are equivalent, you need an isomorphism between the graded pieces, possibly up to reordering. But using this lemma, what you get is um, you just take one quotient here and then you take the associated quotient in the other um, uh, the refinement and then you just get an isomorphism that way. And so that's how you wrap up the proof of the Schreier refinement theorem using the Zossenhaus butterfly lemma. And there you go.